There's a silent war building up today, but it's happening outside Earth. Three, two, one. As we all go about our everyday business, space agencies in America, China, and across the world are fighting to achieve one goal, becoming the first country to control the moon. Well, sort of. After decades of competing on Earth, the biggest countries in the world are now working overtime to establish some territorial dominance outside Earth. And it all started way back in 1969, when the US made history. Now, that giant leap for mankind set off a chain reaction of events, resulting in various countries having the same ambition, to get to the moon. The next step in this race is unfolding right now, and it's going to sound strange at first when you hear it. But believe it or not, that next step is America working to establish a time zone for the moon. Now, obviously, the question that comes to the mind is, why exactly does the moon need a time zone? And the answer to that is simpler than you think. It's because over the next decade, America is racing against other countries to make traveling to the moon become a very regular thing. Now, that ambition is the basis for NASA's Artemis program, which is aiming to literally set up a human base and research station on the moon over the next few decades, which means that American astronauts won't just be going to the moon, but they would also be staying there as well. And if astronauts being on the moon becomes a regular thing, then it makes sense to create a new system for understanding and communicating time on the moon, which is why the White House wants NASA to create this new time zone for the moon by 2026. But here's the thing, this move is also important for politics. Because NASA taking the lead on creating a time zone on the moon, which most other countries on Earth will probably adopt, is America's way of trying to, once again, set a standard for the rest of the world to follow. In a memo to NASA, the White House flat out suggested that defining how time works outside Earth forms the basis of America's leadership in space. But more specifically, this is also about getting ahead of one country in particular, China. Just like America, China is heavily invested in landing its astronauts on the moon over the next decade. And unfortunately for America, you can actually argue that China is making more progress with its ambitions because China also recently made some history of its own on the moon. China has launched an unprecedented mission to retrieve samples from the far side of the moon. That mission makes China the first country to land an unmanned spacecraft on the far side of the moon, with the aim of retrieving samples back to Earth for research. But China won't be stopping there, because it also plans to send a manned mission of astronauts to the moon by 2030. And then to take things even further, China is also partnering with Russia to build a permanent research station on the moon by 2050. Now, this race goes beyond just landing on the moon or creating a time zone for the moon. Because here's a curious thought. If nobody really owns the moon, then how can we decide what countries do when they set up permanent research stations on the moon? And that brings us to a simple question. What law will guide the actions of countries on the moon if and when they get there? Now, as it turns out, that's another thing that the United States is trying to take the lead with. In May of 2020, NASA and the US State Department announced the Artemis Accords, a framework for cooperation to guide human activities on the moon, including mining for resources. By October of 2020, five months after the Artemis Accords were announced, national space agencies of eight countries had signed it, including Australia, Canada, Italy, Japan, Luxembourg, the United Arab Emirates, the United Kingdom, and of course, the United States. But fast forward to April of 2024, and now as many as 39 countries have signed the Artemis Accords with at least one country from every continent, which gives the Artemis Accords some level of global appeal. But that appeal does not extend to China. Chinese government-affiliated media have described the Artemis Accords as being similar to European colonial tactics. And China's partner in this race to space, Russia, has criticized the Artemis Accords as a blatant attempt to create international space law that favors the United States. Now, while China might plan to operate on the moon without regard for the guidelines in America's Artemis Accords, 
there's a very good chance that China could adopt the time zone system that America creates for the moon, simply because of how important it could be to the future of space travel. Now, to explain why this new time zone system could be so important, we first have to answer one question. How do space stations and astronauts currently track time in space? Right now, there are two different ways. For astronauts on the International Space Station, time is tracked by following coordinated universal time, which is the basis for all time zones on Earth. And this makes sense for the International Space Station, but only because it is in low orbit, which basically means it is relatively close to Earth. For spacecraft beyond low orbit, agencies like NASA use a system called Spacecraft Event Time to keep track of mission events and observations. But here's the thing. Neither of these two systems would work for tracking time on the moon. That's because time on the moon works very differently. And so tracking it based on systems we have on Earth would be a very terrible idea. For starters, time on the moon moves slightly faster than time on Earth. And because the moon also rotates very slowly, one day on the moon is about 29 and a half days on Earth. And so with that much difference, we simply cannot track time on the moon in the same way. So the bottom line here is with travel to the moon set to become a very regular thing as all of these countries race to get there, having a globally adopted standard timekeeping system for the moon could be crucial to support precise navigation and landing of spacecraft, to enable better communications between spacecraft, and to also allow mission control teams back on Earth, whether they're in America or in China, to accurately track astronauts and spacecraft on the moon. Now, if this is successful, then NASA's time zone for the moon will be the first step to what will be decades of competition with China to become the global leader in space exploration. All of which brings us to an interesting point in human history. The past hundred years of geopolitics have been defined by the race to own the most resources here on Earth, ranging from oil to land and to nuclear weapons. But with technology rapidly evolving, over the next decades, that race will now shift to space, starting, of course, with the moon. In effect, we are in a race. And so I think it's incumbent on us to get there first and to utilize our research efforts for peaceful purposes. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, then please give the video a thumbs up as that really helps the channel. And don't forget to subscribe as well. And before you go, make sure you check out this playlist of all the cool geography videos I've made on the channel. See you in the next one.